You know, it, it is interesting about who to pay and who not to pay. And you were kind of, you were, you were really kind of the godfather of this, is that um, you look around the NFL now, you can't pay maybe a guard, a linebacker, a tight end. I mean, the game's changed, Jimmy. You got to pay your quarterback, your left tackle, an edge rusher, a corner, and a weapon. And I, I kind of, I, I kind of look at some of these teams like Dallas, and they're like, we're going to let Amari go, and we're going to let Cedric Wilson go. And Jimmy, I'm like, okay, that feels like to me in 2022. I don't know if I could be outbid for both those guys. I don't know if I love that move. Your thought? Well. You know, I, I'm concerned also, you know, about the wide receivers and uh, not having Mari Cooper, you know, there. But, you know, he missed a lot of time. He missed a lot of games uh, at times in critical situations. He wasn't on the field, and I think that's one reason why they were willing to, to part with him. Uh, and they like some of the young guys. And now the problem is they're going to have some guys that are going to be unavailable at the start of the season because of injury. Uh, but they still are probably the most talented team uh, in the NFC East. And so uh, Philadelphia has gotten better. Maybe, maybe they're closer, uh, but they should still win the division. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's this New England thing is weird that, listen, <laughs> it's hard. We know Belichick's smart, right? Like, like I know Greg Popovich for the Spurs is a great coach, but sometimes cultures change, Jimmy. You were able, Nick Saban's done this. Nick has done a very good job to pivot. Nick now admits you can't, you can't hold good offenses under 25 points. You just can't do it. The, the world's changed. The rules have changed. You got defensive coaches, coach and offense, special. They got a cornerbacks coach, coach and backs. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, Jimmy. I don't. And, and yesterday there were seven reports that the offense is a mess. What am I supposed to make of that? Because I know Belichick's a brilliant guy. He's the best. And, and so, Colin, uh, let's look at it this way. Uh, when Josh McDaniels left and they brought in defensive guys and Patricia's working with the offense, all of the media says, oh, there's going to be a problem. And so they watch practice and they see one drop ball and they say, oh, I told you there's going to be a problem. That offense is out of sync. And so, yeah, you know, the media was looking for a problem. So they found it. Now, uh, are they going to get better? Are they going to – is there concerns? I don't think there's a concern with Bill Belichick. Uh, There may be a concern with the media. You know, it seems like to me uh, that bunch scored over 40 points a bunch last year. Now, I know they had Josh McDaniels. But it also seems to me that sometimes when everybody's throwing the ball all over the field, uh, doing something different, gives you an edge. Look at uh, the Baltimore Ravens right now running yeah. the football. And so I, I think Belichick has a handle on what they're doing. Plus, on top of this, if you're an outstanding coach, uh, if you're a smart individual, um, you can adjust. In fact, R.C. Buford, the general manager of the Spurs, came down. You mentioned Popovich a few minutes ago. Um, he said, you know, Pop's going to retire one of these days. He said, what would you be looking for? in a coach? Would you be concerned about a college coach? I said, RC, I said, give me somebody that's really smart. Give me somebody that's really passionate about what they do. And give me somebody that's willing to work night and day. I could care less how much he knows. He'll be outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. Smart usually does win. You're right. Okay. Smart and hard workers. Yeah. You know, um, I was not a big fan of Tua. I said it on the air. He's a little small. He's not super athletic. I think he's a good kid. But if you're in a division with Josh Allen, twice a year, I'm going to have a quarterback deficit. You know, when you had Troy Aikman, you went into every game. You had the best quarterback in division. Boy, that wins a lot of games, right? But I will say this. Tua has always been accurate. High school, college, even last year. And my takeaway is, if you could find a left tackle and some weapons, I think he's not Drew Brees. But I've seen him accurately throw the football, and my guess is he makes a real leap this year. I that's my gut feeling. What do you think? I I think the only concern is is protection, Uh, and I think with McDaniel coming from the 49ers, their run scheme, you know, their blocking schemes as good as anybody in the league comes from Mike Shanahan and of course Kyle, 
And Tua, you know, we've always said about Tua, he's got a nice touch on the ball. And from my understanding, in fact, I talked to the general manager, Chris Greer, just a couple of days ago. And I told him, I said, man, you brought in some talent. You, know, you with Tyreek Hill and with Waddle, you've got a couple of burners on the outside. Plus, they've got an outstanding tight end. So I think they're going to be able to put some points on the board. Plus, they played outstanding defense last year. I think the Dolphins make a big jump this year. Yep, so do I. You know, Jimmy, it, it's, um, I remember asking you, you can't just look at wins and losses for a quarterback. Aikman's first year, he lost a ton of games. But you told me by practice two, practice three, you knew you had the guy. You knew you had – there was a leadership thing, there was a size, there was an accuracy thing. And, listen, Trey Lance I, – I remember when Jake Locker came out of Washington to Tennessee, and I grew up in Seattle – and I remember telling people, that my buddies that were scouts, I'm like, I just don't think he's accurate enough. I love everything else about him. Athlete, good kid, coachable. And I these Trey Lance reports that he's completing 50% of throws at practice, I mean, if you're that coach and you're sitting there and then after practice you watch film, how long do you stay with that? I mean, can you take 50 to 65%? I mean, what do you make of that inaccuracy? Yeah, that's a concern for that position. You've got to be accurate. And, uh, you know, they're going to be good on defense. They're going to be able to run the football. They have a tremendous amount of talent. And at this stage, if he is inaccurate, he's not going to be able to carry this football team. But, hey, Tom Brady didn't carry their football team at the early stage. Right. Uh, A lot of quarterbacks don't carry it early. Uh, Just like, you know, you mentioned Troy. You know, I told Troy, I said, just hang in there. You know, and he said, Coach, we're going to be fine. Just bring me enough talent around me. And, you know, they've already got the talent around Trey Lance. Uh, so I think with the running game and with the defense, they'll be able to see if he can become more accurate. But if he's going to win a championship, he's going to have to be an accurate passer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's hard to repeat. We haven't had a repeater since 2003, 2004. Now, first of all, a lot of it is because there's just a lot of good teams. It's hard to win in the NFL. It's not college football where you get 25 first-round picks every year. So uh, the Rams are going to try to repeat. Um, Take me – you did it. You're one of only six coaches that's ever done it. Um, What was the hardest part you won – what was the hardest part about that second year? You had the talent. You had the momentum. You had all your coaches, but it wasn't easy. What was the most difficult part? Colin, you know, everybody in the organization says, what about me? Um, I need a raise. Um, <laughs> I'm going to write a book. I'm going to have a TV show. Um, you know, I want more money. Everybody, you know, it just, I didn't get enough, you know, credit for what we did. <laughs> right. And, and so – You know, Emmitt Smith rubbing my hair right there after the first Super Bowl. What what did he do? He held out the first two games of the (laughs) season the next year. He wanted more money. Right. Everybody wants more. And this is the thing I've talked to a bunch of coaches that are trying to repeat. You know, the same thing I told Bill when he first came down after his first Super Bowl. I said, your secretary is going to want to raise. You know, everybody wants more. (laughs) And that's what you're going to have to deal with, you know, right off the bat. Now, the Rams – as talented as they are and as good a coaching staff as they've got with, with Sean McVay, uh, I think you know, I give them a better chance than most as far as repeating. Well, you know what helps them a little bit? Aaron Donald, Stafford, Bobby oh. Wagner, um, Cooper Cup are not necessarily high-maintenance guys. I mean, they're kind of guys that right. you had some of these guys. That, they, they're football guys. They get their money. They're happy. They don't have a lot of what I would call like high-maintenance guys, right? Like that feels like it matters. Yeah, it, it was easy for me or somewhat easy. I mean, <laughs> it seemed like it was tough at the time. Uh, but we had the youngest team in the league uh, on the first Super Bowl and the second Super Bowl, the youngest team and the lowest paid team. Uh, and so we were able to deal with, you know, those young guys, they didn't know any different. I would scream and holler at them and tell them, here's what we're going to do. And they didn't question that. And sometimes when you got the old vets, they say, oh, wait a minute, do we need to be working this hard? You know? And so that may be a problem, but it wasn't a problem with me because we had so many young players. Finally, um, Mario Cristobal, I, I think Miami is going to be pretty good this year. Now they have to go to Clemson yeah. and to Texas A&M and those are probably L's, but they've got a quarterback 
They throw the ball. What they didn't do last year, they weren't very good on the offensive line. They weren't very consistent running it. And I think that's Cristobal's game. So I think he's going to be, I think, from the transfer portal, they'll run the football week one because that's what Mario did at Oregon, which is hard because there's no players in that state. So I think USC and Miami both have new coaches. Um, Texas now, Sark's in year two. What is realistic? Because the NIL for Miami's pretty good. They got a guy down there that's going to write checks. I mean, let's not, they do. Ruiz is writing checks. So I'm not criticizing. I'm just telling you what I'm hearing. So what is realistic? Jimmy, this transfer portal, you didn't have that. Lincoln Riley went and got eight. He went and got nine starters. What is realistic for Miami this year? I think if they could win their division uh, and oh, – I think it I think it'd probably be unrealistic to say that they're going to be a playoff team. But if they could win their division, uh, that would be a start because all these new players, they have been recruiting unbelievable, you know, as good a recruiting as there has been. And then Mario, he was always known as one of the top recruiters ever. And and it's going to take some of these new players a year to really get into the system and to fit in. Uh, so if, if they could win their division, I would be happy, and that would be a start. But they, I, I tell you one thing, they, by putting all the money into the program, he has hired as good an assistant coaching staff as yes. I've seen at University of Miami. No. The best since, oh, since I was there. I've been blown away by his staff. I couldn't believe I didn't know yeah. they had that kind of money, Jimmy. They went. They went. Well, all of a sudden, the alumni says, hey, we're tired of this eight and nine wins. We want more. <laughs> <laughs> it's great seeing you, Jimmy. As always, you look fantastic, and we'll talk soon. All right, Colin. Good talking with you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.